Hello, everyone. Um, today, we're going to be talking about Deng Xiaoping. He comes to power after Mao Zedong, and he inherits a pretty bad economy. If you think back to some of the things that Mao Zedong did when he was in power, like the Great Leap Forward, which was a huge economic failure and killed millions of people, and then the way that he tries to strengthen his hold on China is through the Cultural Revolution and using kids to denounce their parents and their teachers. Um, there just was not a lot of industrial output going on during that time. So the economy was not good when Deng Xiaoping comes to power. If you look up here, the GDP is the gross domestic product. That's the total value of all the goods and services produced in a country. So when that goes up, that um, means the economy of that country is doing well. So if you look at this chart, it shows you when Mao Zedong was in power, what the GDP looked like in China, which is this line right here. And then when Deng Xiaoping comes to power and makes some reforms, how it starts to increase during his time, and then it continues to increase. So if you look down here, I just wanna draw your attention to some key words here. So we have the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution, which were both during Mao Zedong's reign. And that's one of the reasons why this line kind of stays where it is. Then when Deng Xiaoping comes to power um, right before 1980, notice how that line starts to go up a little bit. And then also see this term market, market-based econ economic reforms since 1978. Remember, market is one of those key words. Whenever we see that word, we need to be thinking capitalism. So what Deng Xiaoping does to the economy is he starts to allow some capitalism into this communist state. Okay, so there's two questions that go along with that chart. Okay, who is Deng Xiaoping and why is he important in Chinese history? Deng Xiaoping was a prominent Chinese politician and reformer of the Communist Party of China, the CCP. He led the People's Republic of China from 1978 to 1992. After Mao Zedong's policies like the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution failed to bring prosperity to China, Deng made significant changes. Economically, he turned China into a socialist market economy. So there's that term market again, which means he starts to allow some capitalism into the economy. A mix of government plan decisions with capitalism, capitalist features by abolishing the communes, allowing farmers to own their farms and decide what to grow, allowing people to sell goods they produce in local markets, and opening China to foreign trade. He was, however, unwilling to embrace whole-scale political reform. Despite protests for more freedoms, Deng's government repressed the people's freedom of speech and expression and eliminated opposition to their rule. So Deng was okay with making economic changes, but when it came to making political changes and potentially um, having to give up some of his power, that wasn't going to happen.